Hey, so I just kind of want to do a short video on the Carrion Cross, which I think is an awful name, by the way, um, entrance on NXT. Um, Got to move back a little bit. I am a fan of Killer Cross. Um, the first time I saw Killer Cross was in AAA, and uh, I think I may have seen him somewhere in the, in, in the United States. I forget which promotion he was in, um, but he had did some work in the United States where I saw him, and I followed his work in AAA as well. But he reminded me a lot of Psycho Sid or Sid Vicious, however, which, whichever version of Sid you know. He reminded me so much of him. And for a lot of people, that's not a... <laughs> because of Sid's reputation, that's not a compliment. But he reminded me so much of Sid. And I was a big fan of Sid when I was a kid. I mean, you're talking about this, the master and the ruler of the world, this gigantic man who looked absolutely crazy at all times. Uh, his matches were violent. He uh, he just had a way of approaching the business where he seemed like even if he was half assing it, he just or if he just you don't consider him to be good at it. It was still something about him that was electric, that was powerful, and that also comes across in Killer Cross. And I, for me, when I see Killer Cross, I think the same way. Like I've seen him cut promos. I know that he can cut promos. I've seen that. He has that same intensity, the, the the giant Sid intensity, where he's like a big guy who can, you know, who looks like a murderer. You know, he just looks like he'll just kill you, and you know, you know, like, like it's almost like a guy in prison. You know, like Sid came across like one of those guys too, like a guy you would see in prison, who are like, you know, if you drop the soap, you never know what might happen. You know, and I'm not even talking about he'll rape you. I'm talking about like he'll choke you to death. For dropping the soap, you know what I'm saying? Like you just, you just don't know what kind of like it's the unpredictability, in in the way that they approach the business, and the intensity in which they approach it is very serious. It's, there's no laughs, there's no jokes about it, and I I was very excited um, when he they de finally debuted on NXT this week. Um, on the whatever fucking date that was, May the 5th, I think, or May the 6th or something like that. Um, and I think that his entrance, which I think they said Scarlett, um, who was Scarlett Bordeaux, I, I, I became more familiar with her through Impact because um, I didn't see, I didn't pay attention to too much of what people do on the indies, but I saw Scarlett Bordeaux on Impact when she was doing the smoke show segments on Impact. And I was kind of interested in what she was doing. I thought she was going to be like a, um, a, a sable like heel type of character. But what they decided to do on Impact was go a different direction. Like they introduced like the Disco Inferno, and the Disco Inferno was coming out there saying like, "Oh, she has no business wrestling." And it became like she was the baby face, and he was the heel, which was like fucking weird. Now, for people who might have been watching Impact at the time, please correct me if that if i'm wrong about this but i'm pretty sure after all of those smoke show segments they started introducing the disco inferno to do to do the to do the intergender match between scarlet and disco inferno which i think was a waste of what scarlet was doing at the time because it actually seemed to be working it got me to pay attention to who she was <laughs> i mean it was going on for like months and months with her doing the smoke show segments so when i saw the two of them on uh, NXT this week, I was exceptionally proud, and I was really happy. And I know that you know they this is their first foray into NXT. I know that they appeared after the Johnny Gargano um, Tommaso Ciampa match, and then they attacked Tommaso Ciampa again um, a couple of weeks ago. So this isn't the first time we've ever seen them, but this is their first. This was a first match, and for a introduction to these people from people who might not know, you know, fans who might not follow people on the indies. Like I'm, I don't follow people on the indies, trust me. Um, but I've happened to be familiar with these two people from other promotions. And, um, I think that might've been, is that where I saw killer cross was an impact? I think it might've been, might've been seen, might've seen him on impact. Hmm. Yes, it was impact as a matter of fact. Yeah. It was impact where I saw killer cross for the first time. And then I watched him watch some of his matches in triple A. Yeah. So it was an impact. So, um, but I was, I was, I'm really, I think their entrance was fantastic. Okay. Scarlett did the entrance. She did the, the opening song or the opening, um, I forget, what would you call it? The bridge or the, op the intro to the song, uh, before the music really hits. 
and I think that that was, I think that that was awesome. Like the entrance itself was some of the best shit that uh, WWE has done in a while. You know, especially one of the best things they've done as far as the empty arena is concerned. And it really was, um, it, we did miss out on a lot with it not being in a full arena with people watching and being able to react. And, but you know, it, it still got people excited online, which is a good thing. And I'm thrilled. And I really, and I see they're coming in at a top spot. They're coming in to fight um, Tommaso Ciampa. So we getting Ciampa versus Cross, which ought to be fucking awesome. Because Tommaso Ciampa is great, and uh, Killer Cross, like I said, is awesome. If if you can get me from hook me from watching you on Impact to getting me to watch your matches in AAA, um, you you did pretty good, you know. And Killer Cross is one of those guys that he's one of the few guys that when I saw him um, somewhere other than WWE, I decided I'm gonna go back and try to see you know, what else that he's done to make sure it's not just you know clever editing on the part of whatever promotion he's on because you know sometimes a promotion can really cleverly edit a guy to make him seem like he's better than he really is but killer cross is the real deal man like he's really good i saw him in blood sport as well i watched his blood sport match when he, uh oh shit what's the guy's name josh barnett is it oh josh 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 barnett i'm pretty sure um he did the blood sport um segment or the blood sport match i thought that was pretty good too and that's that kind of fits the killer cross gimmick and i think that's re really what we're going to be looking at here as a sort of uh maybe mixed martial arts meets sid vicious and i kind of want that more more of that sid vicious um um appearance for him but we we, we have here is going to be pretty pretty awesome and um, i hope people really just give it a chance you know I saw a lot of people being real excited. Other people were kind of like, eh, who is this guy? You know, he's not that big of a deal. I mean, yeah, he wrestled us. He squashed some guy in like 32 seconds. I mean, <laughs> you're not going to get a lot out of it. You know, he hasn't sat back and cut a promo or anything yet. But I, that, but that stuff's coming. You know, and I'm excited to see that kind of stuff happening. So, um, what did you guys think of the Carrion Cross Plus Scarlet, they, um, she's going by Scarlet, not Scarlet Bordeaux, which I, I think is fine because there are no Scarlet, there are, there are no other Scarlets in WWE. So, and um, I'm I'm kind of interested in where she's going to go. Like um, they're doing a decent job of not rushing the women into matches. Like um, Selena Vega has not wrestled in a long time. She doesn't really. Well, she she wrestled a couple weeks ago. I think she wrestled Bianca Belair, but um, they kind of like to keep the women as managers I, i'm not really all that familiar with scarlet as a wrestler um i did not watch those intergender matches with her and uh, the disco inferno because i don't watch intergender wrestling but um i also don't remember seeing her wrestle women that often um i know she did you know some uh appearances on raw and stuff like that but she seems to have found herself as the sort of smoke show sex sexy kind of character now she's more of a vixen it kind of goes along with uh, this carrying cross gimmick, but I'm interested in seeing where it goes, and um, I'm also interested in how they're going to mix it up with the Garganos, you know, with the uh, Johnny Gargano and Candice LeRae, because they're calling themselves like the power couple of NXT, and now here comes Cross and Scarlet, and um, this is going to be awesome. Okay, this is going to be badass, and if WWE has any kind of uh, good sense anymore, before april of next year killer cross is on raw fighting drew mcintyre for the title if they have any kind of sense you know assuming this stuff goes well of course assuming he doesn't absolutely embarrass this embarrass me in this video and shit to bed which i don't see um how that would happen but you know he should not be in nxt for a long time he should be on raw pretty quickly wrestling you know the big guys you know for the titles and you know, and holding them, you know, because he, he has that kind of presence and he's that interesting of a guy. But um, what did you guys think? Like this video, share it, subscribe and talk to me in the comment section about what we got, what you guys think of the Carrion Cross and Scarlet.